Welcome back to our mathematics video series. Today we'll be talking about optimization under constraints once again. Uh, you remember we have already dealt with the setting of equality constraints and today we are going to extend our setting to also cover inequality constraints. So the aim is to deal with a more general setting And specifically, our problem will now look like this. So we'll again minimize. And of course, maximizing instead is not a big deal. You just replace f by minus f, and then you maximize instead of minimizing. So we minimize a function f of x, subject to, and now we have two classes of constraints. The first one is inequality constraints. We have a function g of x, that is constrained to be less or equal to zero. And as before, we'll still have a function h of x that is constrained to be equal to zero. Again, as in our setup before, f will usually be a function on our n to r. It's important to have real domain, a real codomain. Um, so that we can actually define what a minimum of that function is. G and H are both functions defined on R to the N as well. So a map uh, to a value for each point in the feasible domain. Um, and G consists of several real valued functions, specifically m real valued function so it maps to r to the m and while well, h consists of l single real valued functions so it maps to r to the l so we have m inequality constraints and l equality constraints in our setup here okay you will find that uh, the condition on a point for, to be a candidate for a minimum or a maximum is not quite the same as in the only equality setting. The inequalities make things a little more difficult. Um, and to make the notation a little more concise, we'll first define what we mean by a KKT point. KKT is short for Karush, Kuhn and Tucker. Um, and those were the mathematicians that came up with Karush, Kuhn and Tucker's theorem. Um, that's the next theme that we'll see. Um, that basically says any candidate point for a local optimum in this setting that we have here is what we call a KKT point. So we first list the characteristics of such a point to make things a little more concise here. And that's the definition. So as usual, we will work on an open set so let x be a subset of r to the n be open and then we'll have functions f g and h defined on that set x that are continuously differentiable so f x to r g x to r to the m h x to r to the n let those all be continuously differentiable on capital X. And then we'll take a point, a point of the form. We'll have one X star. So that's a point in capital X. And then we'll have Lagrangian multipliers again. Um, we call those Y star for the part that is associated to the function G. And we call them A, uh, sorry, sad star for the part that is associated to the function H. So this is a point where the x star is in capital X 
the y star is in r to the m so for each part of that function t um, there is one multiplier one real multiplier um, and the set star is in r to the l so for each part of that h there is one real multiplier okay so again what this means is that is in x that is in r to the m and that is in r to the l Okay, such a point will be called a KKT point or Karosh, Kuhn, and Tucker point. If the following so-called KKD conditions are satisfied. So what are these KKT conditions? The first one is similar to what we already have seen in the uh, Lagrange theorem. Basically, we're taking something like the Lagrange function again. Um, so we're combining F with G and H um, together with the multipliers Y star and Z star, and then we, we're taking the derivative, and that needs to be zero. It's not quite the same thing because of the inequality constraints, but at least the first part is true. So differentiating with respect to the X's, the X part of that function, that needs to be zero. Okay. So that's basically the same as above, um, and specifically that means the gradient of f at x star plus the Jacobi matrix of g at x star transposed y star, so weighted with the appropriate multipliers, plus the Jacobi matrix of h at x star transposed z star that is zero and by zero of course i mean the zero vector here so this usually gives you a system of different equations then the next two constraints are simply feasibility um, so we're stating that g of x star is less or equal to zero so the point x star is actually feasible with respect to the g conditions. And the third, h of x star is equal to zero. So that's feasibility with respect to the h conditions. Um, and then the next two points are a little more complicated. Point number four, we constrain the Lagrange multipliers, the y part at least. So the part associated to inequality constraints, those Multipliers are constrained to be non-negative. So while for the equality constraints, we allow both positive and negative multipliers, for the inequality constraints, we only allow positive multipliers. And the fifth point, that is probably the most useful of those, um, as we'll see in the examples soon to come, um, those multipliers, those y multipliers, are of course closely related to the g functions. And that relationship looks like this. So y star transposed times g of x star is zero. And that is the, the number zero, just to be sure. So what that means is well that's a scalar product so what we have here is y i star times the ith part of that g function g i at x star that sum is zero for our i from one to m and what that means 
Um, you know, the gi of x are always less or equal to zero for a feasible point. Also, we constrained the y's to be greater or equal to zero. So what that means is that all of these expressions here will necessarily be a number greater or equal to zero times a number less or equal to zero. So that's always less or equal to zero. So we're summing up summons that are all less or equal to zero, and we want the sum to be equal to zero. No two summons can cancel out because their sign is all the same, or they are zero. And what that means specifically is that each and every summoned is equal to zero. So yi star times gi and x star is zero for all i from 1 to m. And this condition here is known as complementary condition or complementarity condition. Complementary condition. And what that means, in other words, is either that function g is equal to zero, so the inequality constraint is actually fulfilled at equality, or if that's not the case, then the corresponding multiplier is zero. And that will give us um, some good hints on the solution of these so-called KKT systems. Um, as I said, we'll see that in an example in one of the following videos. Okay, so that's a KKT point. So basically what we have is this Lagrangian condition. You know that one already. Feasibility, that's those two points that should be obvious as well. Uh, and then it's these special conditions here, complementarity and um, non-negativeness of the Lagrangian multipliers for the inequality constraint. So that is what makes KKT a little more involved than just the Lagrange theorem that we see. Okay, finally, uh, we're ready to formulate the corresponding theorem. And that is the theorem of Karush, Kuhn and Tucker, or KKT theorem. And what it says is when it starts uh, the same as in, in the definition. So again, we take a set X subset of R to the N that is open. And we take functions F, X to R, G, X to R to the M, and H, X to R to the L. And we let those be continuously differentiable on X. Okay. Then we'll take a point X star in X and we'll say if X star is a local minimizer of our um, optimization theorem. Then there exist corresponding Lagrangian multipliers that satisfy these KKD conditions. That is the main statement of the theorem. Uh, there's one slight complication. Um, we need what is called a constraint qualification for this to work. Basically what this says is that um, the functions g are in a way rich enough. I'll, I'll formulate that precisely in a minute, but that's something that is almost always satisfied in practical settings. Um, okay, so we need continuous differentiability here. Okay, so further, let x star be in capital X such that the following constraint qualification holds. That condition is the following. So um, 
the uh, derivatives of the g functions, the gi of x star, where gi at x star is equal to zero. So those where the inequality criterion is actually active with equality, we just take the set of those. And then we'll also take the set of the hi gradients where now h uh, i is equal to 1 to l because those are always active it's a, it's an equality constraint so the h i um, are always active we don't need to filter out the non actives here okay so we take the, we take the set of these gradients here and the condition is that this set is linearly independent Okay, so that's what we call a constraint qualification. And again, these are what we call the active constraints. The inequality constraints are actually satisfied at equality. Those are called active. And then the statement of the theorem is if h x star is a minimizer of the optimization problem minimize f of x subject to g of x is less or equal to zero h of x is equal to zero then there exist vectors y star in r to the m and z star in r to the l such that the point x star y star z star is a kkt point okay and again that's only a necessary condition so what that means is for each minimizer there exist multipliers such that this minimizer is a kkt point but not every kkt point is necessarily a minimizer or a maximizer for that matter Okay, so we can only filter out candidates for minima and maxima. Um, we cannot really determine the minima and maxima that way. We we'll still have to deal with those candidates in another way. Um, and we we'll later add another condition that makes this statement even a uh, sufficient one. Um, but in general, please remember it's just necessary. We can just determine candidates for optima. Um, and we cannot be sure that each of these candidates is actually an optimum. Okay, so that uh, concludes our treatment of KKT, at least from a theoretical point of view. In the next videos, we're going to see several examples and applications of KKT's theorem, so we can see how that is actually put to work.